Hey guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations in Austin, Texas. Welcome back to the shop. You know, I recently got a question in one of the comment lines of one of the videos that said, hey, I'm trying to mill some parts square and they're not coming out square. Why is that? Well, short of actually looking over your shoulder and telling you what you're doing wrong, uh, the very first thing that pops into my head is that the table's creeping. And if you've never heard of this or been aware that this could possibly happen, this is also a very good opportunity to explain more about backlash. Everybody knows, okay, well backlash is slop, but really what is that slop and what effect does it have or what impact will it have on a good part? I took a look at my mill in greater detail than I had originally planned to look in my mill and realized that, okay, you have two handles on it. You have an X and Y axis. As you crank your Y axis, table moves away. Either side of the X axis, you crank it clockwise and the table moves away. Two identical setups, right? Wrong. They're not identical. And I thought that was pretty interesting. One of them is a left hand thread, one of them is a right hand thread. Now which one would be the left hand thread? <laughs> that could leave you hanging, but I'm not going to do that. The left hand thread is the Y axis. Because if you think about it, on the X axis, the entire screw traverses with the table which means as you're cranking from the right hand side clockwise you're screwing that lead screw into a stationary nut on the on the yoke or forgive me I don't know what that main body chunk is called that controls both tables or both directions but as you turn the x-axis screw clockwise on the right hand side of the mill it pulls itself into that nut and the table moves away from you now on the y-axis as you crank it clockwise, the table moves away from you. That is absolutely contradictory to a right hand thread. If you were to clockwise crank a right hand thread, it would pull the table towards you because it would be drawing the nut towards you. So the Y axis is a left hand thread. Then I started thinking, what about the lathe? Is the lathe the same way? It absolutely is the same way. The little compound is a right hand thread because the lead screw stays integral to the compound, goes with the compound, and on the cross slide it's stationary yet the cross slide moves. So the cross slide is a left hand, compound is a right hand. Alright, now you're smarter. Let's talk about the backlash. The backlash, the easiest way to describe that is its slop between the screw and the nut. One thread's bigger than the next, right? So as the, as the direction of the thread changes, it takes a minute for the pitch of the screw to encounter one wall or the other of the nut that it's driving. It looks like this. Okay guys, you can imagine if you're looking at the cross section of a lead screw and a driving nut, whether it's a half nut, table nut, whatever, you can see the air gap as the screw moves and just imagine if this was actually spinning it would look like a spiral staircase and it would actually be moving so you can see the airspace on the front of the screw or excuse me it's now on the back of the screw if this was your table your table would have the potential to move in this direction based on the black being your table it's being supported by the front edge of the screw in a counterclockwise rotation on a right hand screw the engagement moves to the back side of the nut the table is now supported from this side and the chances of the table moving that way are slim to none. The table can however move this way. So there you go. That is a very simple explanation of what backlash is. And depending on how tight your machine is, how, how much tighter this engagement is here, when it gets very tight, the rotation of your dial or the amount of backlash you have is considerably reduced. So as it starts to wear and get bigger, the backlash is increased. Simple. Okay, well that was pretty basic, but you get the idea of what happens inside your, your nuts when the screw starts to turn. No comments on that. Alright, the easier way to describe this is imagine four walls, big cardboard box, wooden box, it doesn't matter and you're inside that box. As you start to turn the crank on your machine, 
you start to move inside that box without touching the walls of the box until you encounter the wall of the box. That is where the backlash ends on the lead screw. As you turn, you're still inside this box pushing and the table's going with you. Now the airspace is behind you. So there's another wall behind you. Which means when you stop pushing, the table can still move this much. Depends on the cutting force. Let's look at this. You have a part in your machine. And you have your edge finder in your spindle. Looking down the spindle. Now when you find the edge of your part, you're cranking the block into the edge finder. You're going clockwise, right? You hit the edge, you move in, you've got your zero, still clockwise. You do the exact same thing on this side. Actually, you move the table past and you bump it in. If you're coming in from this side, moving your part into your cutter, also clockwise. Boy, I wish they were darker. Let's use the blue one. There you go. So you have two clockwise motions now. Now I'm going to do this based on a climb cut. Let's say this has the cutter. Here's your cutter. It is rotating clockwise looking at it. So the force is doing this. If you're standing right here, let's say here's your head and shoulders pushing on that box. As that cutter is coming around, you're pushing against the cutter, which means this is not going to creep in. The force is pushing against you, the backlash is on this side of your part, all is well. If you crank the cutter, crank the table to the other side, you are still moving clockwise. Your force is still on the back side of the screw, yet here comes Mr. Cutter. starts pounding on this side of the part as it's walking across in a climb cut. What's the potential? The potential is that the backlash causes the part to migrate. As the part migrates, it becomes farther from center and the wall that you expect it to be straight is now tapered because the table moved. Can you avoid this? Yes, you can avoid this. When you're doing the back and you have a clockwise rotation to your dial and you cut the back of your part, you come down as you're coming across, instead of staying in the same direction to get your number, when you hit your number, take the backlash out. That'll move the support back to this side and it'll keep that leg straight. Same thing with the left side and the right side. Backlash on a manual machine is the devil because the dial stays put but the table moves. So you look back at your dials and you think, I don't know, my dials didn't move, how come my part's no good? That's the beauty of a digital readout. When you have a relationship between your machine body and the table and you have your pickup on both sides of your digital, when that starts to move, the digital's going to tell you that something's moving and you're going to see it. So if you have a digital readout, try this. Set your digital on zero, walk across with a nice heavy cut, back of the part's going to be fine. When you crank in the front and you start to draw it across, you're going to see that digital readout start to creep. You can avoid this by putting a little bit of snug on the table locks as you're creeping back and forth, both ways, X and Y. Now let's talk about, a lot of guys say you can't climb mill on a manual machine. Well, when you climb a mill and you're just chugging along and all of a sudden the table goes boom, makes that one big jump and it might ruin the part, it might pull the part out, it might blow the cutter up. What is that? Well, that's the gap here in the backlash jumping all at one time to the other side. And when it does, depending on how tight the machine is, that could be a substantial bite that overloads the cutter, chips the cutter, breaks it off completely, jerks the part out, any number of things. But you can avoid that, like I say, with the drag on the table. 
So set the drag if you're going to do a climb cut. I personally love climb cutting. It leaves a much nicer finish. And as far as the left and right hand lead screws are concerned on your machines, take a look, familiarize yourself with it. So one of them, the lead screw moves, the other one, the lead screw doesn't move. So the pitch is completely reversed. That's all I got. That's a quickie. That's to address a comment that I got about how come my parts aren't square. Your parts aren't square because your cable is potentially creeping. And whether you know it or not, set an indicator on it. Put an indicator on your machine anyway and push your table back and forth. And you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. You might have to think about it. Anyway, that's all I got for now. It's all I got for this year probably. It's just about Christmas. It's the 23rd of December. So Merry Christmas to all of you. Thank all of you for your support this year. And hopefully we'll uh, get together in 2018. So Joe Pryzinski, Advanced Innovations, Austin, Texas. Merry Christmas. I'm out.